Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Stephen Rivas. I'm the product manager here at Win911. I'm just going to wait another minute here for a few more people to join, and then we'll get started. In the meantime, can can everybody hear me okay? You can let me know in the chat or the question section. All right, great. Thanks, Doug. Okay, I think we can go ahead and get started. Like I said, my name is Steven Rebus. I'm the product manager here at Win911. And today we're talking about our latest release, which is called Win911 2023. Um, so what we're going to do today is just go give a brief overview of what's new in the software. Um, specifically, we'll talk about the main new p component to Win911, Win which is called the Control Center. And we'll talk about subscription licensing functionality, a few of the other changes that we made, some uh, integrations into Excel Reporter, uh, and uh, a few other things that are on the horizon uh, for the end of the year. So we'll go ahead and get started with the Control Center. So what is Control Center? Um, for a while now, we've had a few different uh, utilities on uh, that shipped with Win9 and 1, and we were creating more and more utilities. And you know, we thought to ourselves, do we want to really keep, do we really want to keep creating new utilities, or should we start building them together into one uh, larger uh, utility that uh, is easier to for us to maintain uh, moving forward? And that's what we decided to do. So we've We've created this new control center that uh, includes uh, functionality similar to the log viewer. So if you're uh, familiar with Win91, if you use the log viewer tool, it's essentially that on steroids. So there's a new live monitor view. Uh, you can there's remote connectivity. You can bypass alarms, and then you have the historical alarms that are coming out of the database just like before. That's essentially what the log viewer was. And then there's the announcer piece that it verbalizes the alarms over the speakers of your computer. Uh, so like I said, we wanted to try to get all these things into one, one utility uh, instead of several different utilities that uh, you'd have to jump to all around on your computer. And that is what uh, we're calling Control Center. So let's talk a little bit more about what these features are like. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about was this live monitor. This is what um, is going to show you what alarms are active in your Win91 system at any given time. Uh, these are the actual live alarms that are currently in the system. If you used the log viewer before, uh, then you may or may not know that, that what that tool was doing was just going to a SQL server, querying that database, and, and showing you the uh, results. It was never really meant to be used that way. It was pretty slow. Um, and so it's been overhauled to give so we can have this live uh, view of alarms which makes it much easier for us to do remote uh, remote monitor windows as well. And that is actually one of the things that we've done. It also gives us the ability to show us to show you more details about the alarm. So before we were just showing you what got logged, which wasn't nearly all the details uh, of a particular alarm. But now we have exposed those to you. And there's a few of them here you can see on the side of your screen that are available to you. Um, namely, the one that we get, we had requests for a lot were just the descriptions, and it seemed so simple, but the descriptions weren't available before. And uh, now you can have the tag description, the condition description, you can have the value of the tag, um, and you can turn all of these things on or, or off, uh, depending on what uh, view you want to see uh, on your control center. And once you do figure out what you want to, uh, to show in your uh, live monitor window, you can actually save that view. So if you set up filters on particular columns, you oh, turn on columns, turn off columns, you get it the way exactly that you, the way that you want, you can actually save that view. And you can create several different views. You can, I mean, obviously there's a default view. Uh, you can view bypassed alarms. Uh, if you ha are connecting to multiple systems, I'll talk about that in just a second, you can have different views set up for individual Win91 systems. 
uh, and just easily switch between them in this top drop down menu that will be available to you. And the live monitor window has all the same functionality as the log viewer when it comes to acknowledging alarms as well. You just select the alarms that you want to acknowledge, hit the act button, and you can act that alarm and it goes back through to your window one system all the way to your SCADA system, depending on which one you're using. Just wanna check to make sure audio is still going. Okay, great. All right, so that is the live monitor view. I mean, it's pretty basic, but it is it is much faster. The performance has been improved uh, quite significantly because again, we're not querying a SQL database. This is coming directly from what we call the dispatcher module. So these are, again, the alarms that are live in the system at any given moment. Now, because we changed the way we are displaying alarms, it really opens us up to a uh, network uh, or remote connectivity to other Win91 systems. So in that example, I had, I think it was just, I was just connecting to a single Win91 system. But if I have multiple Win91 systems on my network, then I can connect to those and I can view them all in a single uh, control center. So rather than having to jump around from machine to machine, you can just add those systems into your control center. Um, I mean, the, the settings are pretty simple here. I mean, you give a system name and what really matters here is where that machine is located. I've got a host name in there, but that could be an IP address, the port that it's running on. And then you could enable different features for this particular system that you'd be adding to Control Center. And once you have them added, you can see those different systems that you have uh, added to your Control Center. So. At this point, if I were to go to the monitor view and I, I could see the alarms for both of these Win91 systems, uh, I could add additional Win91 systems. Uh, if you if you have alarms, uh, let's say you're doing a redundant system and you have and they're mirrored alarms, then you can uh, turn it off so that you're not seeing alarms from the standby system. So you're only seeing one particular set of the alarms. Um, and also both of these are also connecting to the announcer, which uh, we'll talk about in a second. We also added a long time, it's been a long time coming for the new newer Win91 uh, platform, but alarm bypass. An alarm bypass, essentially what it allows you to do is select uh, some tags. Um, what we've, we've done is we are supporting individual tags or you can select an alarm subscription. An alarm subscription could represent multiple uh, or, or totally different sets of tags or alarms. Uh, but I think most people that are using bypass are familiar with it by selecting individual tags. So you can select these tags, bypass them. And if they're an alarm, you could omit them from being called out through Win911. So if they're you have some asset that's going through maintenance, you don't want Win91 to notify on it, and you don't want to do anything within your SCADA system, we could come directly to Win911, bypass it. it has it, There's no link to the SCADA system uh, with suppression or anything like that. So you're just bypassing it on the Win91 side. And when you do that, like I said, you get to select from a different from a set of tags, so that set how long you want it to be in bypass, and then those tags are bypassed until it expires or you manually remove them from the bypass um, the bypass uh, functionality. So when you do remove them, let's say the alarms are still active, uh, it, Win91 will treat those alarms as if they're brand new and will go through escalation as if, it, uh, as if the alarm first appeared. So even if it was active while it was bypassed, when you, when you take it out of bypass, um, it would not one will see it as a new alarm and treat it as so. So that is the bypass functionality. There's also announcers built into this. Announcer is not a new tool, um, but we did build it into this into this utility. Um, there's really not a lot changed with the announcer, though we did add this new um, ability for you to play a WAV file uh, or prepend your message um, before it reads out with a WAV file. So, oh, I thought I had a better screenshot there. You can see over here, I've got a WAV file uh, uh, specified here. <laughs> Didn't think of the word. Uh, it's, so whenever an alarm comes in, it will play that WAV file uh, before the alarm gets read out. 
So if you have some alarms that need a, a particular uh, siren or a, a different indicator, depending on its severity or something, you can choose different WAV files for different notification policies. In this case, I've just got all notification policies are going to play this ring one WAV file. But let's say I had different notification policies, one for high priority alarms, I could do a high priority sound, low priority alarms could have a different sound, or maybe there's an absolute emergency sound that you need says get out of the building everybody you could have that in there as well so every time the alarm is announced these wave files will play um, you can also do a text to speech uh, prefix too if you'd like that was that was there before other than that the announcer is pretty much the, exactly the same as it was before but i know that wave file was uh critical for for some of our customers the historical logging, this is what the log viewer would show you before. This is uh, pretty much the same. I just wanted to show you that it's still there. Uh, if you want, need to look up past alarms, um, you can query them and look through, see what notifications were sent out. Uh, that is, did, that, is uh, that didn't go anywhere, it's still there. Um, there's also the timeline view that I don't have a screenshot of, but, um, but that is the notification view from the existing log viewer as well. So that's the control center. That's the new utility that we built uh, for Win 911, and a lot of our effort went into this new utility um, to give you this, to give you the ability to to connect remotely to different uh, different Win 911 systems, and we're pretty happy with uh, how it turned out. And talk about change gears and talk about some other stuff. Uh, subscription licensing. Um, some of you guys know that we're, we've ventured into subscription licensing and we have uh, enhanced the licensing within the software. So when you do get a subscription license from Win91, it was, didn't really see a lot of information about it. We've built in um, some little uh, tools so you can see when your subscription will expire, what license level you're at. Um, and when it comes time to renew, you'll start to see little banners in the software letting you know that a it's time to renew we'll send notifications out to your contacts in the system letting them know uh, if you haven't renewed by that time which hopefully by then it should never come down to uh, the last 30 days or the last 15 days like that but if it does we'll start sending notices out letting you know that um, your notification system is going to be compromised if it isn't uh, renewed and then if it does once it expires it will continue to run in a grace period uh, for seven days, so you still have even more time to renew that license. So that's built into the 2023 software um, that uh, wasn't there before. So you didn't really know um, when your subscription would expire. And I also just want to point out that a lot of the new functionality, and I'll talk about this later, uh, is going to be built into our subscription offerings. Um, so with the per I mean, you will still offer perpetual licenses, but as subscription licenses become uh, more prevalent, a lot of our new functionality will be only be available in our subscription licenses. Now, a few other things that I know aren't very flashy, but I did want to talk about them uh, just because I do think they're important and it takes a lot of time, uh, it takes a lot of dedication to keep up to date um, with, uh, keep your tech stack up to date. And one of the bigger changes we made was uh, changing our .NET target to 6.0, which I know it's, I mean, why am I telling you this? I mean, it's really not that flashy, but it's just our commitment to keeping the software up to date. And when you stay on top of things, you you get a, you get a different benefits. I mean, .NET 6 is a lot faster than .NET 4.8, which is what we were using before. It's a long-term support. A release, which means we don't have to update and for a long time, for a long time. Um, so we'll be able to uh, use this platform, this particular uh, platform that we built for a while, without having to go through major upgrades while we build upon it. Um, and one of the more important things is security. Um, .NET 6 is going to be supported for a long time. It will continue to receive security patches. I mean, eventually .NET 4 and 4.8 will fall out of support and we just want to stay on top of these things and just wanted to to let you guys know that we're committed to keeping uh, the technology behind our product up to date and and moving forward um a few other things again this is more 
I know it, it's it's not that flashy, but uh, I wanted to talk about some other backend updates, uh, particularly the comm layer. This is what we used for all the different Win91 modules to communicate with each other. Um, we were using something called WCF, which is Windows Communication Foundation. Uh, and we've replaced that with gRPC, which is Google Remote Procedure Calls. A uh, reason I mentioned this is because it's, it, it's so far, it's, it's been much faster for us. It's, it's more up to date. I mean, WCF is an older technology. It's, it's going to be sunsetted eventually at some point. Uh, and we wanted to move to something more modern and something that could potentially help us uh, uh, with the migration to the cloud in the future. Um, with this particular change, WCF was using Windows authentication to um, for all the uh, inter-module communication. So if you were using just a, a distributed deployment of Win911, you knew the pain of having to get everything lined up with Windows user accounts, uh, making sure you're setting up cross-domain permissions and all that kind of stuff, which could be a huge headache. But now with the gRPC, it is using certificate-based authentication, which means that each machine that Win91 runs on, it, it is using an SSL cert. And instead of having to rely on individ those individual Windows accounts, you can just use uh, an SSL cert and trust from machine to machine to machine. And we've built a utility for that. It's just the security uh, configuration utility. Uh, it can be used to create certificates, trust certificates on remote machines. Uh, but the deploy the distributed deployment is uh, much easier uh, to deal with when you're not dealing with the uh, Windows accounts in a domain environment and using cer certificates instead. So pretty happy about that. Um, so just a couple more things. Uh, the dispatcher, we made a few changes to the dispatcher. Um, if you use workflows within Win911, you know there are these notify all blocks that uh, you can put into them. And a notify all block will notify everybody within a particular role on your system. So it could be a manager role or an operator role. Well, previously, when you would use one of those, it would just blast out a notification to every communication method uh, for, for that role. Well, now we've built it in so that you can limit it. So if you want to say notify all operators by mobile or notify all operators by phone call, then you can get more specific about uh, what notifications you're sending out. So it's just a simple change that should make uh, setting up workflows a little bit easier. We also added a new option for re-notification. So um, when an alarm, when when no one receives an alarm, let's say it's in the active state, which normally it is, and it changes from one state to another, you need to tell Win91 what you want it to do. Do you want it to re-notify the people that already knew about that alarm, um, which is commonly the case. Um, but uh, a lot of times those people that had been notified about the alarm were no longer on schedule. Uh, and so, but they'd still get the notification uh, that the alarm had cleared, even though they're not responsible for it anymore. Well, we added a new option in for updating previously notified connections and honoring the schedule. So you don't have to worry about sending those notifications to uh, the operators that are, are no longer on duty. Uh, we also made this really simple change of adding in the schedule column into the call out list within the notification policies. I know it's just a simple thing, but just being able to see the schedule there helps out when you're selecting who should, uh, who should be on uh, in the call out list and whether they're going to be called or not. So you don't have to jump from place to place within the workspace to see if they're on schedule or what schedule they're using or not. And that's that's about it for the new functionality for 2023. It's This release was really about a, a, a technology stack update, backend updates, and is put us on a steady footing to build on this new platform that we have. And, We'll be aggressively adding features um, each, well, hopefully each quarter, that's our plan. And I'll talk more about that in a second. Just wanted to talk about SCADA support real quick. Um, pretty much everything is the same. We've added all the new, um, we've added the new uh, SCADA versions. One thing I did want to point out is that Aviva Edge and Simplicity are not going to be supported until the next release, which we're targeting for the end of October. Um, so if you are on those uh, if you are on those SCADA versions, then you want to hold off the upgrade until then. 
Um, but every other than that, everything has been, I mean, every, all the, what you were using for is still there. We do have an expanded uh, OPC portfolio, if you weren't aware, we can connect to OPC DA uh, and OPC UA DA, OPC A and E and OPC UA A and C. I know that's a lot of acronyms there, but um, we can connect to a, a bunch of different flavors of OPC now. Uh, and if you're an Ignition user and you want to connect to Win911, we have built an OPC UA server for it. Um, it's an OPC server that you embed into your Ignition application, and then you use our OPC UA uh, alarm and conditions uh, client to connect to that Ignition system, and you're pulling the alarms in as if it was a, a native SCADA connection. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so that is uh, also available. You can download Win91 today. Uh, just by going to uh, smartsites.com, which is our uh, the new company name. Um, just go to Smart Sites, go to download, and you can see it there. If you're on support, you're eligible for an upgrade. If you're not on support, feel free to contact our support our sales team, and they can get you set up with a quote for getting back on to support and uh, upgrading to 2023. So that's what all about all I wanted to say about. Uh, about 2023, I suppose. Uh, and I wanted to change gears to some integrate an integration in, uh, between Win911 and Excel Reporter. As, as you guys, uh, many of you guys know, SciTech and Win911 uh, uh, teamed up uh, together to create smart sites. That's um, what the what the new brand is all about. Um, uh, two uh, companies joining together. Um, and I just wanted to talk about uh, Win91 and Excel Reporter and how these two products together uh, really make sense because they're both extending the functionality of your SCADA system. Win91 is going to extend the reach of your alarm system beyond the control room, so you know you can send your alarms out to the operators uh, who can do something about it. And Excel Reporter extends the reach of your data collection and analysis, so they really complement each other well. So uh, one of the um, one of the um, benefits to the to Win91 users is that uh, Win91 really helps to maximize uptime by enhancing response to alarms. And Excel Reporter monitors can monitor that Win91 system to help uh, our users maximize their investment. And what I really wanted to talk about are these reports, these templates that uh, Excel Reporter has for Win91. Um, where it pulls in the alarm log database from Win91 and creates several different template views uh, that you can use to get more insight into your Win91 system. So just to go through a few of them, uh, the first one is uh, what, what are the top notifications that are being sent out? So it's essentially a collection of what are your uh, bad actors, what, uh, what alarms are being triggered the most, so you can take action on that. So if you've got a lot, one particular alarm that's going, that's uh, representing a majority of your um, notif uh, alarm notifications, perhaps you can do something about it. So you can view that here in this in this template. You can also see who's getting uh, the most notifications being sent to them. Maybe it's uh, maybe uh, somebody's getting overloaded, or somebody is not getting enough uh, notifications, and they're just being underutilized. You can see all that with this uh, with this report from Excel Reporter. You can also see um, uh, gateway traffic and you can uh, see what notifications are going out like with SMS, mobile, how many are going out per per notification channel. So if you want a breakdown of those metrics, those are available to you. And then the last one is a system audit. So it's just, it's, it's taking everything that's in that database and you can create reports on it and, and filter on pretty much any aspect of the data that's available to you. So um, I just wanted to draw attention to this, uh, these, this integration into uh, the Win91 logs from Excel Reporter that uh, is added quite a bit of value to Win91. So what's next for us um, for next quarter? What are we working on? Well, I mean, Smart Sites is, is uh, if you haven't seen it before, I'm sure you're, you're wondering what the heck is Smart Sites, but um, we'll be making more efforts to rebrand 
uh, our products to under the Smart Sites umbrella. So you as you'll see Win 911. Right now, it's still called Win 911 2023, but moving forward, it, you may see the names change, but it is still uh, the same great software that's always been there before. Um, we're going to do more uh, integrations into Excel Reporter, and I'll talk about that in a second. And we're going to we're creating we're work, currently working on some dashboards for Win 911 and a failover utility. So the new integration with Excel Reporter that we're working on is, yeah, it's great that they have templates that can pull in our data and, and you can see those, but what we really wanted to do was make an integration into Excel Reporter so we can pull the reports out of, out of Excel Reporter and then make them available to you uh, via email and mobile. So you'll be able to, through Win91 Mobile or email, uh, be able to see your Excel reporter reports and request them on the fly. I see, got somebody. Oh, okay, it's a question. I'll get to the questions at the end. Um, so you'll be able to see that uh, in your mobile app uh, or request them through email. You'll also be able to drop uh, uh, push report blocks into a workflow. So when an alarm gets triggered, you could trigger an Excel reporter report to be uh, generated and sent out. Um, so this is uh, something we're working on right now, and we expect it to be av available at the, or toward the end of October this year. Um, dashboard. Oh, and this will, I mentioned this earlier about subscription. This will be a subscription only functionality. So if you're on a perpetual license, uh, this won't be available unless you uh, either switch over to subscription or, or, or purchase a new subscription license. <laughs> Dashboards. So dashboards are something we've been wanting to do for a while. We're, what we're going to focus on first is just some simple alarm metrics. And if you want advanced alarm metrics or any metrics, I suppose, we'll um, be uh, teaming up with Excel Reporter to pull those into the dashboard. Uh, and I'll be reaching out to some of our SIs to see what other uh, KPIs they would like to see uh, within these dashboards. Uh, so you can see exactly what you want uh, within them. This is just a simple mock-up. I know it's just looks kind of like a drawing, but uh, I just wanted to show you uh, an idea of what we're looking at for that particular dashboard. Again, that will be subscription only as well. And so will the failover utility that we're working on. Um, a failover utility is designed to, if you have a primary and a secondary Win91 system, and one of them goes down, uh, that this utility will be monitoring them and depending on your configuration will fail one system over to the other and if it recovers then it will fail it back over. We've been doing this before with scripts um, and I know that nobody really wants to deal with a script so we finally built the utility uh, to handle it automatically for you and um, so again I don't have a real screenshot for you right now I just have a mock-up but it's a very simple utility where you just pointed at two different systems and choose a few options and then you're uh, monitoring both systems and they'll, when they're in a bad state, uh, they'll automatically fail over. And all that will be configurable within our status module, which will shows you when an email module is going bad or the SMS module is bad, or maybe the dispatcher isn't working correctly. Um, so you can choose a bunch of different options on what, uh, what constitutes as, uh, as a failover. All right. And that is it for today. So I know I covered a lot of stuff pretty quick. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in uh, the question section of the chat. And I know there may be a lot of sales questions, which I unfortunately won't be able to answer a lot of them for you, but... Um, okay, uh, let's see. What's the update path like? Well, that depends. Um, it depends on where you're at right now. <laughs> if you're on version seven, um, the very old software, we have a, a version seven import utility. Uh, so you can take that old configuration and pump it into Win91 2023. If you're just on tw the Win91 2021 or version four, then you can just run the install and it will update uh, for you and migrate your configuration. So, um, if you have concerns about that, uh, the, our support team can certainly assist you with the upgrade. Um, is this uh, next question is, is this upgrade included if a customer has an active subscription for 2021? Uh, yes, it is. Um, 
if you have an active uh, subscription with 2021, then you can upgrade update to 2023. Um, let's see, you're missing. Oh, I'm missing iFix version 2022. I thought I had them in there. Uh, but 2022 and 2023 of iFix are supported. Uh, so a question is, if customers are on a perpetual model now, will they be able to get the new functionality that is being limited to subscription only uh, uh, right now? Uh, the, the current plan is no, that they would have to switch over to a subscription. And we're working on some uh, new subscription um, tiers. So, you know, any it, there's, so it, things could change uh, between now and then, but uh, right now the, the answer to that would be no, they wouldn't be able to get it unless they switched over to a subscription. Is the Excel reporter included in the Win91 license or is it an extra license to purchase? It is an extra license to purchase. So you'd have to purchase both Win91 and Excel reporter. Um, similar to, <coughs> excuse me, to the answer to the previous question, we're working on some uh, new um, license tiers and bundles for both Win91 and Excel reporter that I think will uh, make it clear. Will the failover sync the SQL databases? So for that failover utility, no, it, you'll still have to sync those um, every time you make a config change. Uh, that's something we'll look at next lead for um, uh, some, hopefully next year. Is there a cost to upgrade to 2023? Uh, if, if you're on support, then you can upgrade to 2023. If you're not on support, then you'd have to get on the support. Um, and if you're pretty far out of support, I don't recall the exact amount of time, then uh, you would have to, I think you have to purchase an upgrade. Uh, you need to reach out to the sales team so they can look it up and, and see where you're at and what the cost would be if you're not sure. Do any of the 2023 updates affect the ability to go active standby or a use of a use of the hot backup uh, functionality with current scripts? No, it'll those all those things will continue to work just as the way they did before. So it's only if you want to use the failover utility that you would need the subscription license. The scripting that you were using in the past will still work because we'll still make those uh, applets available. Uh, when you say subscription, is that over and over above the support cost, it includes uh, it, there, it inc includes a base level of support, and then there are optional levels of support you can add on to it. Is the software configured from Control Center? No, uh, Control Center is is so you still configure everything in Workspace, um, which is the main configuration tool, and then uh, the uh, Control Center is a separate utility that just shows you what alarms are in the system, lets you do the bypass and so on. And you can install that machine uh, remotely on multiple machines if you want. Um, but it, it's the purpose of that is to a day-to-day -day use with the software to see what alarms are going, what alarms are active at a particular moment. Um, with uh, using open source with Google on the back end, what extra steps are you um, doing with cybersecurity protections? We're, we're going through, um, um, so we're planning on going through some pin testing and I mean, we're using uh, secure connections with SSL certs uh, today uh, that I know are secure, but we are going through additional measures too, to just make sure uh, that uh, when no one is as protected as it can be. Is Excel Reporter integrated into 2023? I mean, right now, the release that we just released, no. Uh, the next version that we will release in October, uh, the answer will be yes. With the integration of Excel Reporter, uh, does that require a full version of SQL? Uh, nope. It's the same, uh, same SQL Express is fine. And that, that um, those templates that they use, they, they're just pulling in the databases from SQL Express that we've shipped with the software for years. Uh, can Control Center communicate with multiple systems via network connection and what ports would have to be open on a firewall as well as the protocol? So it's TCP, uh, the default port is 4020. Well, the answer is yes, you can. Uh, the default port is 4020, but you can change that port uh, if you 
any, any TCP port range that you want to set, you could use. Um, but uh, 4020 is a default. That's just a, a port we've been using for communication for a very long time. Um, but if it doesn't work for your particular network, like I said, you could change it. Uh, Excel Reporter will work with the Window and Standard uh, license. The templates will, uh, the templates that I was showing you. Um, the new functionality where we're pulling reports out of Excel Reporter and making them available through notification, that will require a higher tier. Um, I'm not sure um, what that will be yet as we're still working on those subscription tiers and we'll have an update very soon on that. So check, keep an eye out on the website and uh, for some newsletters. Is support backdated if a customer has fallen off? Yeah, uh, it is. Um, I don't know the exact details. That's something you want to reach out to our sales team uh, on and they can help you figure out uh, where that customer stands. And there's a lot of questions here. How much time do we have? Okay, we're good. Um, have you reached out to previous uh, order email addresses of customers about the company name change? Yeah, we've we've made a significant effort about the name change. We've sent out newsletters at a introduction about it, um, and we'll continue to do so as we keep moving forward with it. As a new version works with Simplicity from remote location, the new version will will work with Simplicity in the next release, but not this release. Is there a change to, are there any changes to schedule where an alarm is triggered before an operator schedule starts, but not acknowledged yet? Will they still get the alarm? I'm not sure what you mean, Kevin. Um, there, I mean, if an alarm is triggered before an alarm, uh, before an operator comes on schedule, they're, and they come on schedule, they're not going to get it. So if you mean like when they come on schedule, do they get a snapshot of what alarms are in the system in that particular moment? The answer to that is no. Is the window and control center replacing the log viewer? Yes, there, when you update, you won't see the log viewer, you're gonna see window and control center. Can you run more instances of control system uh, control center on different systems? Uh, yeah, you can. You can run it on multiple systems, and it's not license limited, so you can run as many as you like. Have there been any changes to how Window One and In Touch communicate right now? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's the application that has to run alongside it. Yeah, it's still the same way. Um, there is there's a there's a way to do um, OPC and have a direct connect like functionality uh, with our new OPC DA module. Um, working on some documentation for that that we'll post on as a KB. So if you're if you don't want to use um, the alarm toolkit, which is what that application uses, then um, you could use OPC um, and expose the alarm bit and the ACK bit, and then when that one can monitor both very with its OPC client. And it's not exactly the same as that OPC direct, I mean, the InTouch Direct Connect, but it will it will uh, give the same functionality. And then there's a question, is the InTouch Heartbeat still only, ind only indicate a healthy sweet link connection? Um, it will, it will, it, it's always kind of done both. So you can do an InTouch Heartbeat and you can also, use a watchdog and the watchdog will indicate whether the alarm uh, toolkit is working. So you'd want to use those in conjunction. So, um, and plus there's the, with InTouch, I haven't looked at it in a minute, but I believe it's called, um, there's a heartbeat and there's a heartbeat suspension option. So you can be looking for an alarm that's coming in. So your heartbeat's updating. If that heartbeat suspension gets triggered, then the heartbeat will stop. And so it's kind of indicating both, it's either SweetLink or the alarm toolkit uh, that is not uh, working. Uh, a new price list, um, there's the price, we can see, yeah, uh, we can send a, a price list out. Um, 
Uh, I've recently learned about the basic subscription and the PDF describes uh, its host, uh, host mobile gateway on Azure first year only. That is about Win91 Mobile. So if you're using Win91 Mobile, the first year of mobile is included and then ex uh, additional years are, are additional cost. Just to follow up with the distributed install, DMZ and all upgrading is just a matter of running the installer on each separate instance. Yes, that is correct. And when you're because we're using cert, uh, certificates now, um, so you'll install the I would you install the first system where your navigation dispatcher module are, and that is going to create a certificate for that machine. And then when you run the installer on the remote machines for let's say the email module or the mobile module, whatever it is, um, during the install, it's going to want to connect back to the um, the first system to trust the certificate. Um, and then you have to trust you have to trust the certificate both ways. Uh, and the support team has documentation up on the KB about go, uh, going through that setup. Did the operator workspace go away? No, Terry, it, that's still there. So it's um, there weren't any changes to it, so I didn't really cover it, but it's still there. We have 2021 R6 Interactive. Does the activation move to the new version when we upgrade? So we're using the same license schema, so you can just upgrade to 2023 with that same license, but uh, the new functionality that I was talking about that is subscription only, that won't be available unless you migrate to a subscription license. But if you're on 2021 R6 Perpetual, you can upgrade to 2023 today. So operator workspace, like I said, that's still there. We just didn't make any big changes to it. Um, the biggest point of confusion on our end has been where do we go to purchase Win91 and Excel Reporter? Are you still maintaining these companies as independent entities? So as to, uh, we're integrating the companies together. That's a really good question. Um, you should reach out to sales at smartsites.com uh, for questions about purchasing. Uh, and then they can sort you out on who, where you need to go to purchase uh, either product. Uh, ultimately, everything's going to be under smart sites eventually. Um, but as we, it uh, takes time to integrate uh, all the back end systems of the company, and it's something we're still working through. Is there a try before you buy option? There's a 30 day demo with Win911. Uh, don't use it for an upgrade. Um, I would. Uh, if you want to try, if you have Win91 and you want to try the new version, I would spin up another system and run that with the 30-day demo. Uh, and then if you want to move forward, then upgrade the other system. Does Control Center have a GUI to run directly inside of plat system platform? It's a WPF app, so it'll run externally. It does run on top of other applications. So if you if an operator runs it, you'll be able to see it on top of an HMI screen. What is the return policy? Uh, it, you'll have to reach out to the sales team and they can answer uh, any of those type of questions for you. 2023, eliminate the possibility of orphaned alarms. We've done some stuff to, uh, to get rid of uh, orphaned alarms. And with the live monitor view, I think you, you'll see less uh, orphaned alarms. Um, um, but uh, I mean, <laughs> there's always a case of anything happens, uh, but we're, we are always trying to get rid of them. If if you come across them, then we want to uh, work with it to to make sure we can prevent it from happening again. All right, let's see. Are we on the last question? Hopefully, with new failover utility, there will be status tags available. So there's a status module that is the the failover module is going to connect to something called the status module, and the status module is what. Uh, shows the status of the Win91 system, then you can see that within the workspace. Um, those are not exposed right now, um, uh, but um, that's something that we were looking at doing, maybe do, exposing it through an OPC server too. We're not, not sure yet. Uh, Troy, I'll re we'll reach out to you on the basic subscription uh, question. Uh, will 2023 run on server 2012 R2? Um, yeah, I believe we cut that out of support. Um, so, well, technically, I think it will run there, but I don't believe we've tested it. So, I'll get back to you on that one, Harley. Uh, 
no, uh, any updates on the mobile app? Weird rotation uh, rendering issue. Uh, no, Mac, we haven't we haven't done anything with the major with the mobile app recently, but we will. That is one of the next uh, big efforts that we'll be starting. So we'll be making some changes to the mobile app. Uh, it'll be rebranded. We'll add Excel Reporter uh, features to it. We'll go through and fix a lot of the the existing issues with it. Um, so uh, be on the lookout for that in the in the coming year. All right. So that's all the questions for now. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out at sales at smartsites.com and we can get back to you as soon as possible. Or you can reach out to me at steven.revis at smartsites.com. Um, thank you for joining us this morning. And, um, and uh, yeah, I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.